All right, I made a video uh, a while ago on multimeters loading down a circuit and where a typical multimeter might be, you know, a mega ohm or 10 mega ohms, it might actually load down the circuit even though you, you think it's not going to. And I'm going to do the same demonstration here on scope probes. So scope probes also load down circuits. I'm going to be using the same resistors that I used on that other video I did. I'll try to put a link below if I remember. These are 1.3 megs, so 1.3 meg, 1.3 meg, 1.3 meg. And I have a, a square wave being generated across them. And so we're just going to take a, a scope probe. We're going to hook the ground up to the ground. And we're going to put the scope load, scope probe, scope load. <laughs> That's the Freudian slip, I guess. I'm going to put the uh, scope probe here on, on this one. And uh, we will take a look. Oops. We will take a look at the waveform, and we have a nice uh, rise time here. So we you can see we have a square wave, and we'll measure the rise time on the square wave. There we go. We'll do that one. So 20 mega, 20 microseconds per division. So 20, 40, 80, something like that. So. Um, let's go ahead and store this in the reference. Reference, save to reference. And now if we remove the scope probe, that one stays, okay? All right. So let's go measure a different one. We're going to measure the same thing, but this time we're going to use a fancy active probe, okay? So if you read the specifications on this probe, it's 10 mega ohms input. If you read the specifications on this one, it's 10 mega ohms input. So you should, we should expect to see the same thing on the screen. So let's hook this up here. Let's hook this one here. I don't have, I don't have a grabber, so I'm just going to have to put it under the wire here and kind of hold it down. All right. So let's go up to the scope. And this one's going to be on uh, channel 4. So we'll turn off channel 1. Turn on channel four, and we need to trigger on channel four. So let's move over to channel four, we'll trigger on that one, and uh, there we go. So let's do a single sweep, and so now we can compare the two. So you can see that um, the, uh, the active probe here is giving us a much, much faster rise time, right? Remember we had... 80 seconds in that one, and now we're, we're coming up in, uh, we can actually move it over a little bit here, we're actually coming up in uh, about 10 microseconds, so it's about 8 times faster. This probe is 8 times faster than the other probe. So it just gives you a, a good idea that um, when you're making a measurement, you have to really think about, did I, did I affect the measurement, right? It's kind of like quantum mechanics, right? If you go, if you go look, you'll screw up the you'll screw up the experiment. Um, but uh, it can also be true just in simple electronics. If you you make the measurement, sometimes you actually alter the measurement, and it's not going to be exactly what you want it to be. And this is a very very benign measurement that we're making. And you could have led to, be led to believe that uh, yeah, it just had it just has slow slow rise time, you know. It's just a simple little clock circuit, and it just you know 80 microseconds. Okay, well whatever, right? If you if you zoomed out, it still looked okay, um, but no, it's really throwing away a, a lot of bandwidth uh, by using uh, uh, passive probes. Now, if there was lower, in, uh, instead of having you know one mega ohm resistors, I had one thousand ohm resistors. Yeah, you're not going to see this effect because you're not going to load it down very much. But uh, even we're even we only have three mega ohms, right? Three three mega ohms is not very much, right? There's there's three mega ohm th uh, total. And we're and we're and really the 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 change here we're looking at is just in, in this one mega ohm resistor and uh, it, it's it's enough just to muck things up and um, it it it's quite shocking. All right, so so what's going on? How how come if they're both ten mega ohm, one loads down the circuit more than the other one? So in a typical scope probe, we have a. Uh, we have a nine meg resistor up front, so this is the tip of the of the uh, of the probe, and then uh, then we've got some uh, coax here, right? We've got coax, so it has to go down the coax, 
and then it goes into a one mega ohm resistor here to ground. And that's our 10 to 1 probe, right? This is the 10 to 1 division, and it, and it goes out. Okay, and then the total resistance to ground, that's the loading, how much resistance to ground is there, is 10 mega ohms. All right, so the other uh, active probe looks like this. Okay, there's 10 mega ohms to ground right away. And that goes into an FET plus 12.5 volts. And bottom looks something like this. Okay, there's some resistor here. And then it goes into the coax. And to your BNC, right? BNC, BNC. All right. So what's the difference between these two circuits? Well, it's the coax. You say, no, no, no they're the same. Well, this one, this capacitance, so coax is like a whole bunch of capacitors, like a whole bunch of capacitors all along the way. There's all these little capacitors and that all adds up. So it's how many picofarads per, per foot of scope probe. So the longer the probe, actually the worse this capacitance gets, right? But there's a bunch of capacitance in the, in the coax that loads the circuit down. It's, it's this R and the C that creates a roll off. But here, this length is very, very, very short, okay? And then this is a very low impedance point and driving the coax, it doesn't care. The, 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 it, the capacitance of the coax doesn't care at all because you're driving it with an active circuit. So that's, so that's the big deal. This one has to go through the coax to get to where it needs to go. And this one gets to get uh, amplified current wise, right? It's a, a, a current amplification here, so we have a very, very hard driving uh, uh, resistance here, a very, very low impedance here that can drive this coax without affecting the signal. So difference between a passive probe and an active probe, and yeah, there you go. That's all there is to it. Just put a little FET up front and you're done.